And now, Aaron, let's talk about you, Dark you Disciple. Talk about Dark Disciple? <laughs> let's talk about Dark Disciple. Ah, all right. Gong Gong. Gong Gong. I think he's he's ready for Dark Disciple. Yeah. Ah, man, Dark Disciple is... Ah, I'm trying to think of all the books we've read. I really like Brotherhood a lot. Yeah. But this one was really good as well. And mm. I think because... They might be two of my favorite books that we've read so far for the for this for the series show okay. so far. Yeah. Um, I think it might be because they're both really closely connected to like Clone Wars. Sure. Like I almost feel like this is like one of the last Clone Wars stories where I felt yeah. like Brotherhood was like the first Clone Wars st- story. You, you know certainly what I mean? have no problem imagining in your head what's going on. No, I don't. No, and like it, right to the point where I'm like, man, Ventress looks so hot in this dress, <laughs> <laughs> right? And she has hair. You know, and I'm like, what is this? This is cool. Because I can just see it, you know? Sure. My mind's eye. I don't have to be like, man, I don't know what that looks like. This, I know what it looks like. Yeah. Yeah. And at some point, like, when reading through this, too, like, uh, Quinlan, uh, Voss, like, I, yeah. I really liked him in this book. I liked him in the one uh, arc we had him back when they were chasing, like, Zero the Hut in Clone Wars. Yeah. Which is pretty much the only other experience I've really had with him. I know he's, like, in comics and stuff, too. Sure. I, I, um, I definitely have a relationship with him. It's not, it's Legends now, but... Back in the Republic comics, he was like this undercover Jedi, and at one point, well, he was uh, he went real deep undercover as a dark Jedi and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So like, there was a lot of themes that kind of like were brought back into canon. Where I'm like, Ooh, sure, interesting. Well, okay. the first time we meet him here, he's kind of like a undercover spy Jedi, right? Like yeah. trying to find this smuggling ring or yeah. what, whatever it is he's doing, right? Like, yeah. I, I, now, I, I enjoy seeing this different type of Jedi that we have, as opposed to, like, he's not Mace Windu. He's also not Obi-Wan. Yeah. Obi-Wan, I, I like his relationship with Obi-Wan, because Obi-Wan, a- like, he doesn't want to admit how much he likes him, I feel like, yeah. but he, he does care about Quinlan, yeah. even though he's like, he annoys me so much. Yeah, sure. <laughs> you know no, what I, I mean? Like, he's like, oh, this yeah. guy, I don't want to deal with him. Don't say him. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, before we get too far into it, I did want, like, this was originally Clone Wars, mm. uh, an arc, an actual an eight episode arc, which we never eight got. Episodes? Eight episodes. That's like a whole season almost, you know? Yeah. There's some information out there about it possibly being two four episode arcs. Yeah. I could see them doing the, uh, you know, we had some stories where it's like, well, here's yeah. three of these this season, and then we'll come back and touch on these, like Darth Maul. Yeah. Touch three more of these the next season or whatever, you know? Yeah. Maybe it's something like that they could have done. But but knowing that uh, uh, this comes from Katie Lucas, right, George's daughter, mm-hmm. I was shocked to learn how young she was when this happened, when, when she was writing Clone Wars stories. She was like 17 to 19 writing Clone Wars stories. And... The Clone Wars stories, like the ones that have been produced that she's part of, I love. I mean, she gets to work with Savage Press and, and all that stuff, you know, like some really cool stuff. But uh, I thought she brought something really interesting to Star Wars, which was a really wholesome relationship to two people that I don't think about as being wholesome. Sure, yeah. <laughs> no. Um, I guess I'll mention it now. You, yeah. you've, you've already said the name, which was what I was wanting to avoid. Oh, um, interesting. That's where you went. Because okay. I had no idea she was involved in this. Really? At all. I, had, I knew nothing. So Did you know I that she wrote Clone Wars episodes? Knew nothing. <laughs> oh, surely we've talked <laughs> nothing. about that. <laughs> knew no idea that she was involved. Is so this, when, I, when I got to the end. Is this a gore when situation? When I got to the end of this book and started reading or hearing the, uh, whatever it's called. The not, foreword. Yeah, the sure, foreword, right? Yeah. It starts talking about like writing Clone Wars episodes and how yeah. much they enjoyed this and stuff like that and how they used to be a uh, uh, assistant on like ep- the prequels, uh, right, and stuff like that. Yeah. And they'd be there and was learning this and that and all these different things. Like, yeah. oh, man, this is really cool. And they kept going through. And then it got to the part where it talked about, I remember going to the movie theater with my dad and holding hands in the back yeah. of the theater. Yeah. And he, I never saw more joy on in his face. Yep. <laughs> I'm getting choked up now thinking it's about really it. really good. This, this hit me harder than almost the whole book did. <laughs> But, well, uh, yeah, because you didn't know that was Katie Lucas. Because I didn't. That's why I said don't bury my lead. I didn't even know that <laughs> was you, the lead. And you keep was, saying it. You keep it, saying her name. But Aaron, it you went have through, to understand it went through, how it went through crazy this, that is. It went through this thing <laughs> talking about seeing my dad. and he's, I've never seen him happier <laughs> than seeing Star Wars fans enjoying Star Wars movies. Yeah. And then it said Katie Lucas Katie at the Lucas. end. And I just started crying. Damn. <laughs> That's amazing. I was like, well, I, I should have loved it I should so apologize. I had no idea just yeah. how ignorant I, you were. Yeah, I said, <laughs> I was like, stop talking about it. I wanted, I was like, you already ruined it on Andor. I'll at least get to talk about it here. That's so and amazing. You, you kept saying it here too. Cause I don't yeah. know if everyone else knew about that or anything either. So for me, yeah. that was an experience that like, I don't know if everyone had, but it was like, 
oh my god, it's so good. And I was like, what's wrong? He's like, oh, it's Katie Lucas. <laughs> 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 I thought for sure we talked about Katie Lucas during our Clone Eric, Wars I forgot fucking Christian Bale was in Thor yeah. 20 times. <laughs> I can't be the one to keep track of that. No, it just, I'm just saying, like, when I, I cut you off early, I'm like, hey, no, no, don't say anything. No. And you said, oh, damn it. You damn know, it. I, it I apologize. So that, that was, when, when that was you, the lead that I was when looking you, at. Yeah, you're, you're Barry the lead and the cut off, like, I had no idea it went that deep. That's yeah. like you saying, oh, like, so we're on a planet no, called it's, Earth. No, it's not. It's nothing like that. The moon's a circle. That is in common the, no. knowledge to anybody just living. So there's people that don't know. <laughs> right. See? <laughs> but no, I, it, just, it just hit me so crazily, and I was like, oh, my God, that's so good. Doesn't I lo- it say I just her name love- in the beginning of the... I don't it. remember. It says it. Uh, uh, based off adaptation by Dave Filoni, someone else, and Katie Lucas. But that's I mean, fine. Maybe I don't remember that. I didn't remember that yeah. part. But I got to the end, and like that's, sometimes too, I'm it, jealous. I have an you. interesting way of like books too, where like yeah. the beginning of books are always mm-hmm. the toughest parts for, for me, right? Because I'm it's always getting it's getting into it, it's understanding what's going gotcha. on and stuff. So like sometimes like, I feel like I forget a lot of the beginning stuff. Do you feel like that's getting but, easier for but you? The, now maybe, that you're kind of stretching that muscle, maybe, maybe I don't know, a little bit. But it, it, I still feel like it's it's. I really hit my stride in the books when I start getting to the middle, mm. and then when I get to the end, I'm like, oh my god, this is so good. Yeah. But I'm like, I, I should re-listen the beginning this to really make sure I understood the beginning again. So I, I love I listening when I drive, stuff, and you know? sometimes I get home and I'm like, shit, I just go around the block a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> you go around. The- <laughs> well, that's a really good part. <laughs> Jay's like, you worked late today, huh? Like, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> well, I had to grind, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, um. But no, that that that's well, that's amazing, and I I will really say good. that I am jealous of your experience, and I'm sorry that I've ruined it <laughs> no, so thoroughly. No, I mean you didn't ruin the experience. I just wanted yeah. to talk about it, and yeah. it was just it was just it was crazy. No, I just, that's awesome. Like not realizing who was writing the foreword, I guess, uh-huh. and hearing all that stuff, and not realizing who it was at all. I mean, I guess we talked about her before because I love the she idea was of you one... being like, who the fuck is holding hands with George? Who is this? Well, I didn't realize it was George. I don't think because I don't think in the foreword oh, they, really? they mentioned okay. they just said. My dad, right? Oh, okay. I don't think they said George in it. Okay, that I, makes I sense. I don't remember yeah. that part. So, no, I didn't think. That's really funny. <laughs> like, ah, uh, I mean, George Lucas, I held hands with my dad. And it's like, oh, I wonder who this who could be. Who is this PA know? assistant you know, that's yeah. able to write this book? Yeah, I don't know, man. Nick Killer here? I don't know what's what going on. Shocking. <laughs> so, no, it was just, it was really cool. And I really enjoyed that part. Yeah. Um, but that's really not, it's not the important part of the book. Because the whole there's so much of a story that was there's just really good. Eight Clone Wars episodes worth of I stuff. I can't believe there was eight episodes. Yeah. That makes so much sense because this there's a lot here. Yeah. And I think if you did split it up among like two seasons, it would mm-hmm. make sense because you kind of you do this send off for Quinlan. Yeah. And like he's out there doing stuff for a while, mm-hmm. and you come back, and then you get into like more of the meat of what's going on over here. And sure. you could have another gap too, yeah. where he's been here for a while. So yeah. And also <sighs> like before getting too far into it, like I think there is a conversation to be had about like man. I really love this book. You know, books obviously give the opportunity to jump into a character's mind like no other medium. Sure. Um, comics sometimes, but there's just something about the written word that, like, that's the only way to communicate and you're getting into someone's head. But I, separately from my enjoyment of that, would have liked to have seen those eight episodes. And, oh, yeah. And, like, what was the pace like? What was Do the both. episodes like? <laughs> yeah, of you course. Know? Well, then which one's <laughs> canon, Aaron? No, because they, inevitably something's going to be wrong. Something's no, not going to work. I don't care. No, it's always there's always going to be a difference. I mean, I've I've still yet to read like episode three book. Sure, you know, yeah. like I haven't read that, but yeah. I know there's differences there. But it's also very similar. Yeah. So I don't know. I would like both, and I would just make the canon in my head and just go with it. Yeah, but I'd probably be like, well, the the series is the canon one, but the book one is still just it's yeah. supplemental. I mean, we're always going to have to have some type of hierarchy yeah. of like, well, what outranks what? Sure, if it's on the screen, it's first. Yeah. Then it's you know you, you second third exactly you sure down, yeah right so but no this the story here starting off I thought it was interesting uh, I don't know I, I liked hearing the uh, council talk and discuss about this terrible you know the war has gotten out of hand and I guess Dooku has finally reached a a line that the the council's like. All right, kill him. <laughs> you know, like yeah, I mentioned it a little bit in our earlier discussion, but Mace Windu is just like, well, we could uh, kill him. <laughs> yeah, like cold blood assassination. And I'm like, you know what? I remember being like, ooh. I mean, no one's gonna go with this. And then all the Jedi are like, all right, yeah, let's go with that. Right. And even Yoda's like, mm-hmm. <laughs> Yoda's just sometimes when like when the Jedi need to do something, but Yoda doesn't like. We don't want to besmirch his his reputation. He just goes. <laughs> Tr- tricky like, this situation is. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> no, I mean, and, and like, 
That was yeah. one of the most shocking things for me is just how much. And as the book went, Mace is like, kill them. Kill those ones. Kill everybody. <laughs> <laughs> At one point, he's like, kill them all. If anyone gets in your way, just fucking kill them. I'm tired of this bullshit. Well, That's I what mean, he does. I understand the Dooku one because, like, he's the he's also – if his viewpoint is yeah. that Dooku is the biggest cause of this and he's it's too dangerous, Sith right? Lord, yes. You had the same idea with the Emperor later on, where it's like he's too dangerous to be kept alive, exactly. right? No, so like, it, it I makes, can see Mace being. It that makes guy, perfect easily. sense. I'm not saying that it was out of character. I'm saying it was so in character. I was shocked <laughs> that he was just straight up like, "This is an assassination mission." Yeah, murder this guy. Yeah. So I don't know, but that's... like I love you know later in the book with like. You know, this is kind of your fault <laughs> when they say, like, I don't think that he really fell. I think it's more like you pushed him. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. No, I I really enjoyed I, I was saying about Quinlan earlier, mm -hmm. but um, having him in this, it really led me to the idea of, like, maybe in the future we can talk about, like, favorite, like, other Jedi. Sure. Because there's always, like, the big ones, right? There's Mace, there's Yoda, there's Anakin, Obi you know, all yeah. those ones and stuff. But who are the other Jedi that are your favorites that are, like, in the background? You sure. know, that maybe you don't yeah. get to see as much, or maybe they're not in the forefront of movies or the cartoons or anything, you know? Yeah, like, so, you have to either get the action figure or the visual dictionary to get that name. Yeah, some of you don't even know, yeah, you don't even know a name. Yeah, <laughs> so, exactly. So, um, that might be a fun thing to do in the future at some point. But, I would uh, enjoy that greatly. Yeah. But, uh, no, I, I, I'm i glad that they end up getting Quinlan to mm -hmm. to be, I guess, the assassin or the assassin starter or, you know, I yeah, don't, de depending on which way you want to kind of look at it in the beginning. Um, it's like, well, who do we know that can just, like, doesn't, like, you just, we'll do whatever. Eh, Quinlan Voss. Yeah. Well, he's also, like, the undercover he's Jedi. The undercover you know? Jedi. Like, that's why I like the, the second, I think it's, like, the second chapter where you meet him, and at first it doesn't really, his name was... I don't remember what his name was now. Sure. But he's got some other name. He's there looking yeah. at artifacts. I like how they talk about, like, you know what? He doesn't really buy any artifacts, but he touches everything. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, he's seen all. He, mentor, he knows yeah. everything you did now. Uh -huh. So it, it's cool to see, like, how, how he operates typically because mm -hmm. he's not really too prominent in the Clone Wars. You right. know? He's not, like, a typical in-the-battle Jedi. Yeah. Like, we see Luminara, and we've seen, I don't know, Plo Koon and different stuff, yep. but never Quinlan. Mm -hmm. Um. So getting to know him and seeing like what his process is, and it's like, all right, go find Ventress and befriend her. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, ooh, okay, this would be fun. I'm excited to see what we do with this. So I, can we I, give a special shout out to the guy that narrates the book, dude? Uh, Mark something. I don't remember what it is. Is there a voice he can't do? He's so good. Yeah. Let's look it up because I don't uh, want to do a special shout out and then not mention his actual name. I really <laughs> want to say like Mark Shepard. Or yeah, something? I, I it's something like that. But can he? Is there a voice he can't do? He does a lot of really He's good Dooku. voices. He's Dooku. Mark Thompson. Mark Thompson. Yeah, Mark Thompson. is his name, and he he just does for his, eleven hours and eleven minutes. That guy did every character perfectly. Yeah, no, <laughs> he does a really good job. There's not really a character where I'm like that one sucks. You yeah. know, like the Dooku's pretty good. Uh, for a little bit, I was like, oh man, his Quinlan's kind of Anakin-ish. I don't know. And then he sure. did Anakin later on. I'm like, oh, I like and his Anakin, Anakin is though, like you know? a perfect mix of Hayden and Matt. I feel like yeah, yeah, it kind yeah. of is. And maybe a, maybe like I, a, a centimeter towards Hayden than Matt. I think he who did uh no, it was Jonathan Davis at Brotherhood. But that yeah. one there, like I thought, had a pretty good like it was Hayden into almost Matt Lanter as I was hearing him read yeah. his. But Mark Thompson, uh, he also did. Uh, Marcus says that he does reaction videos too, and I want to go watch that. Oh really? Yeah, I want him to react as Dooku. React as Dooku. Yeah, because his, his Dooku's great. He also did Light of the Jedi, but I don't yeah. notice the voices as much because I don't know you the don't voices, yeah. you know? So here, he's like, he's got to be Mace. He's got to be Obi-Wan. He's got to be like, Dooku. He he's has a be... clear male voice, but he sounded just like a Saw's Ventress. His Ventress was really good, too, yeah. Like, no. at the same time. Yeah. At the same time. <laughs> like, it was both a male masculine voice and it was Nika Flutterman's female sounding Asaz Ventress. Yeah. At the same like time. Like the very kind of airy, breathy yeah. kind of... I personally felt like the Asaz Ventress was almost like a magic trick for me. It's like, Jesus, how's he doing this? Yeah. No, he's really good. I just good. wanted to I throw out there time. that I know not everybody gets that because they might read the book as opposed to being read to the book, but damn. Sure. And when you're reading, you can probably just hear the voice in your head or whatever, yeah, sure. you know? So, But uh, no, getting, getting more... Uh, Ventress, I thought was really mm -hmm. good too. Because even uh, Melanie and I talked before too. She Some goes of the best Ventress. Um, Melanie, Melanie needs to read this book. She hasn't yet, but uh, she had said at some point about 
something. And she's like, where's Ventress go after she sees Ahsoka that one time down down in Coruscant? Yeah. And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> there's a co- yeah. I, think, I was like, I think there's a comic series maybe or something yeah. that covers some stuff. But Now, much like I ruined your anecdote about Katie Lucas, mm. I myself ruined this book in knowing Did that you know a lot Asajj about Ventress would not make it out of this book. Really? Yeah. Uh, when I was doing studying for Star Wars, and I would be like, well, Ventress is in the Clone Wars movie, so I would mine her Wikipedia page, and mm. I just happened to see that oh she doesn't make it and honestly ever since then there's been you know obi-wan kenobi and andor reaction stuff and it comes up every once in a while yeah. where it's like well maybe ventress and i don't I just shut the fuck up i don't <laughs> i'm don't trying to remember anything. if i knew i think yeah. i assumed because we've not seen her anywhere yeah. and i haven't heard of her anywhere mm-hmm. so i think i assumed she did yeah um i did find um interest in a ventress voss love story mm-hmm me too. And I also really enjoyed in this book they cover, um, I think it was like Anakin and Padme are talking at one point about, oh, they're fun. This can't do this. This is the most hypocritical right? scene I've ever had with Anakin Skywalker. And Padme's like just staring at him like, really, like, Anakin? Motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> A Jedi can't find, like, he's like, uh. I mean, what? <laughs> They were going to blow up the ship. <laughs> Remember that scene in the Clone Wars? <laughs> yeah. Where he just brutally stabs a guy in the back. And he's like, oh, he's a bad dude. He was going to do some bad stuff. Like, what? They shouldn't so, be. We're married. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're married, Padme. We're married. They're not married. It's like, yeah, but we weren't married at one point, you I know? know. So right? I thought that was an interesting, yeah. like, uh, mirror. Uh, yeah, a mirror, yeah. or like, hang a hat on, or something like that, where Anakin's upset about what Quinlan's yeah. doing. But well, you know what? Sure. You did the same stuff. Yeah. So, but no, I thought they're. It, it's. I think it works for the most part. I don't. I was while I, while I was going through it, I was trying to be like, do I have issues with this or does it work for me and stuff and um, i think the way quinlan is like a spy he's undercover and stuff too i think it's easy to kind of like all right this is what my goal is sure and you know what she is pretty attractive you know what maybe she's not really just a bad person and maybe you know she used to be a jedi and oh well, yeah you know like there's lots of things about this person where it's like well, maybe things could happen. Now he kind of falls in, into I th- I this. I think one of the tragedies of not being able to see everything a Jedi has to train for is that we don't get to see, because they're just kind of told, like, don't form attachments. Yeah. But, like, I want to see how. Because as a person, I form attachments to everything. I yeah. form attachments to Mark Thompson. <laughs> I've formed attachments to my notepad that has my... Like, I... I, I I want to yeah. possess your and table love everything. up there in the yeah. Fucking, yeah. How did Jedi like what tools are they given? Yeah, why did because Yoda... I'll tell you what one of my not problems but one of my negatives kind of in the book is man I feel like Quinlan fell real easy. Sure, both not necessarily in love. I can understand falling in love, but like to me, there's an absence of like like you're you're told your entire life not to do this. And maybe just by nature of being undercover where he like has to act like he does mm-hmm. those things but really doesn't, he's more susceptible to it. That's kind of where I, I went with a lot and of I, it. And I kind of get that, but I kind of wish there was a little more like resistance where it felt like, man, you know, sometimes in stories you want like it could happen to anybody. But I personally like stories where it's like it could only happen to this one, <laughs> you know? See, I don't think anyone else but Quinlan would have fallen for yeah. it, though, you know? It's kind of like you know, I, we don't really get to see it. But sure. Obi Wan and Satine, right? Yeah. Like I, I don't know what occurred beforehand. Yeah. But I know that there was a love interest there. There was, but the, also right? he was a Padawan. They were young. He's just into his training. You know, he has the, he has the council saying one thing, and his master being like, "Fuck it, do what you feel. <laughs> Be in the moment, Obi Wan." And he's with Satine, and he's in the moment. He's like, he's Denji from, from fucking, uh. Oh, from Chainsaw from Man? From Chainsaw Man being like, I just want tits. <laughs> you know, like, that's what I want. Well, I'm supposed to deny my feelings. You know, like, but what does, what are the Jedi given in terms of, like, here's how you get around that type of thing? It feels like Quinlan didn't get that as much as some of the other characters. Yeah, maybe. Um, it, that's, I get what you mean, because that's kind of what I was talking about, too. Like, I don't know. I liked, I liked that they did it. Yeah, me too. But I'm like, is the process, is it done well? And I, I, I want to lend the issue of like he's undercover a lot yeah. he's undercover here yeah. and it it just kind of falls into it maybe there's things he touched where he saw like different stuff you know yeah i i, I don't know but they, they didn't really dive into that and maybe they yeah. could have you know 
Specifically, I think like, you know, what does a Jedi have to do to avoid the dark side? I mean, dark side is very tempting. Dark side needs to be seductive. Um, but I kind of felt like he just was like, oh, and just backed into it, <laughs> you know, like sure. n- without much resistance. But also at the same time, like the book isn't super clear on how long they're together, I don't feel like, right? Like there's no. there's time there, right? Is But is there like a uh, year? Honestly, is it another a one of my is things it? that I kind of had to forget is like there was this thing going on during the Clone Wars, especially towards the end of the production of the Clone Wars, where there was real uh, – discussion about them possibly increasing the clone wars from three years to five years really and it was going to mess up a lot of like dating and stuff because like well we have so many stories right like this is meant to take place towards the end of the war sure but then like i you know a chapter would happen and be like, all right months pass and I'm yeah like, months yeah how long is this so story like, is this like the last year you yeah. know like when did they decide to do this yeah and do because th- that's what we were talking about before was um, with this being like eight episodes, mm-hmm. could it have been here's three episodes here? Sure. And then maybe we don't yeah. have it till the next season, right? So you might have months passing in between. Mm-hmm. And some of those situations, like, well, I don't know what Quinlan and Ventress did in between there or what kind of like how the relationship bloomed or, you yeah. know, what kind of experiences they had together or anything. So there could be times in between where it's like, well, there's a lot of time that they spend together because sure. he has to be undercover because he has to get to Dooku and that's what his mission is, mm-hmm. right? Like you, he can't just choose to leave. Yeah. And, like, at, at certain points, he's working as, like, a bounty hunter with her, you know? Yeah. Like, not telling her anything. And then eventually you get to the point where it's like, okay, here's what we're doing. Mm-hmm. And then she starts training him and stuff, too, you know? Sure. So, like, maybe there's a lot of time there. Like, it's really hard for me to tell in this book, like, exactly how long they spend time together. I'm not – there's at least months passing when he's, like, imprisoned. Yeah. <laughs> right? Sure. So – I don't know. Maybe there's a little bit of wiggle room there where I'm just like, eh, maybe if it was a little bit more clear here, yeah. I'd, I wouldn't have any issue with them kind of getting together. But for the most part, I liked what they did with Oh, them. no. I mean, getting past that, I loved their relationship. Like, yeah. I, you know, we want to talk about symbiotic circles. Like, those two, like, he brought her closer to the light and she brought him closer to the darkness. <laughs> sure, <laughs> you yeah. Know? In a really fun, interesting way. Um, and I just... I. I I really, really, really enjoy the end of the book uh, when they go back to Dathomir. Like it's, it's one of my favorite reading experiences in yeah. Star Wars, honestly. No. I like that too. Yeah. I, I, I like I like when they just go to Dathomir uh before too. Like I like a lot of the like I f- I felt in this that it was just Clone Wars episodes, yeah. you know? Agreed. There was so many moments. There was uh at one point who was it? Cody, I think it was. I don't think it was Rex, mm-hmm. I think it was Cody mentioned like slick. Yep. You know, and betrayal and stuff that he had. And I'm like, that was like episode, I don't know, like. Chronologically, it's like episode two. Yeah, Yeah. of of the Clone Wars. It's like right there, uh, they talk about Christophysis, you Mm -hmm. know. They talk about these different parts where I'm like, oh, that was really cool. They even mentioned um, uh, Barisafi when they were talking about betrayals and stuff too and like Dooku and different things. How damaging it was for such a padawan with such potential to have fallen. Yeah, Yeah. they talk about uh, her and they talk about Dooku and how we had like this Jedi who betrayed us and you yeah. know killed a master or you know whatever sure. things they did I, they didn't i guess say that part because yeah that wasn't necessarily in there yet but they they covered a lot of stuff that i'm like this just feels like we're in the middle of the clone wars yeah. and i really i'm really digging that so you know like the problem of the unreliable narrator there's not that it, it doesn't really exist here because it is a clone wars episode it is adapting those scripts and clone wars is very visual so there are elements in this book, and I wanted to ask you, like, how much were you doubting what you were being told as you were reading? Because, like, doubting? there was a point where I was thinking, like, what if Quinlan was doing all this as a Jedi undercover mission just to try to find Sidious's identity? What if he really was using Asajj? Sure. He's still doing the Jedi thing. But I was like, man, how deep will this go? And then I was thinking, okay, now I really feel like when Asajj was like, no, he fell. He has fallen. I can tell. I'd be like, I was like, I, I feel like I should trust her. Sure. So then I was like kind of losing my conspiracy I, theory. I had so many. One of my notes, because I, one thing that was really nice during this book is that I had, I had my little tablet. Yeah. And like, I was just sitting at my computer, just listening. Just doing Clone Wars. <laughs> I'm just, just listening. You're just doing this. Clone Wars reactions by yourself. <laughs> I'm just, all right. Ooh, ooh, okay. I'm gonna write that down. Yeah. Sleeper creature. Yeah. yeah okay. Sure. That's cool. Sleeper stuff. And I'm like, oh, what else? Ooh, Voss. 
turned or not? Is he yeah. turned? I don't know. I'm not sure what's happened here. Sure. Ventress says he is. They say he's not. I'm like, is he really? Is he? Is he trying to put them in a trap? Is he? Did he go back to Dooku to try to kill him? You know, mm-hmm. like I, I wasn't 100 percent sure. I'm like, the only thing I knew about him is that at some point he ends up in the path. <laughs> Yeah, and that's Obi-Wan. all I know. Yeah. Is he good? Is he bad? Like yeah. Ahsoka left the Jedi Order and mm-hmm. she was still being hunted, so maybe he wasn't in the Jedi. Like I didn't know any comic stuff. Like yeah. I don't know if there's, I didn't know any future stories or anything for him. Mm-hmm. So that's the only other thing I knew. And I'm like, I, I don't know. Maybe he does go bad. Maybe he doesn't. I don't. I'm not sure what to think of this. Yeah. So I had a lot of doubts on like, motherfucker it, was named Admiral Enigma. I know. Like he got a Clone Wars dumb name. <laughs> he he did. Yeah, <laughs> and I I say that with all affection. Sure. The Clone Wars dumb name. Sure. Like Admiral Trench. Trench, yeah. General Grievous and, you know. Krell. Like, Krell. Yeah, like there's always, you know, just just dumb, fun George Lucas names. And we we should state that like. Papadobina. Papadobina. <laughs> I don't know how you say it. Baron. I, I know you're pa- talking pa- Papadoidia. about. Papadoidia. <laughs> Papadoidia, I think is what it is. But, uh, you know, like Lucas was in these story meetings for the Clone Wars. Like this book has George Lucas material in it. Sure. You know? And I just like to think that he was like. Enigma. Enigma. Like, George, we can't do that. Like, that's, you know, that has Riddler stuff. And, you know, can we keep this? Admiral Enigma. Yeah. Well, I mean. And he signs your check, and he puts it in front of you, and he leaves. Right? And, well, <laughs> what, was, so was he, I'm trying to remember exactly how the book went through with that, too. Because, like, there was doubt that he was even really Voss, and then mm-hmm. Dooku was just making that up. Yeah. Which I'm like, oh man, Enigma. Like, no, it's a, I it's think a it was question. confirmed. I'm not that sure what's going on he, with this at one he point. He did you know? start to do that, and I was like, I like the idea of Enigma because I'm not sure. At one yeah. point, I'm like, I'm not sure if it's him, yeah, or if it's not. Mm-hmm. It's an Enigma. It's an Enigma. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that that was what went through my head. I'm like, I kind of like the name with of that, course. but it is a little silly too. That's such a George Lucas thing to do. Where you're like, he's like, what? I put it in the name. Yeah, there is no subtext. There Just is. Listen to me. There's there's <laughs> one name that. Uh, Rick would have liked too, um, but it was there was a clone, and it was a clone named Thweepwood. That that was his name, yeah. and I was like Thweepwood. I know Thweepwood. Thweepwood. Yeah, there's Guybrush. Th- it sounds it, like it, he knows yes, Thweepwood yes. too. It, Guybrush Thweepwood was the main character of the Monkey Island series, which I believe oh, is also another Lucas, Lucas Arts, Arts yeah. uh, uh, video game series really? and stuff. And I was like, there's a. There's a, a name that's cool. Okay, yeah. I get that. So I, I just I caught that one. I was like, that was kind of cool. So, yeah. but I, I, they had uh, who was it? Boyle, which was also from mm-hmm. Clone Wars previously, yep. and then Tracker, which I didn't recognize Tracker at all. I don't think so. Uh, but Boyle was with the little uh, Twilight girl in that one. Yeah. Right? But Boyle and oh, shoot, I can't remember what that is. The other one. Yeah, there's two of them. Boyle and something else, uh, with like those dogs. One Twilight with uh, Numa. Numa, yeah, yeah. Uh, so. I, I was just like, oh, cool, Thweebwood, that's neat. Hmm. So I caught that one, too. Gotcha. Um, but, yeah, anyway, uh, I, don't, I don't know where I was going with that. I think it was just we talking about names, and I thought of that name, too, and I wanted to bring that up real <laughs> yeah, quick. Yeah, gotcha. But, um, we also had, speaking of names and Clone Wars connection stuff, too. Waxer. Someone says Waxer. Waxer, yeah, or... that's it. Um, we also had the Bounty Hunter group. We in did. This, which was really cool, including Imbo. Which I don't feel like we get I, to see enough. No, we do not. <laughs> so, I think Imbo is like at the top of my like want to see in live action, oh, but also so kind good. of dread it. Yeah, I get you. Because like, how do you do the hat stuff and no, all that? You just and... do the hat stuff. But would it look good in live action though? That's who my worry. Cares? That's my worry. No, who cares? I want him to run and jump and do yeah. that twirl in the air and block some bullets and stuff. Yeah. And no, like it, awesome shit shouldn't be reserved to Mandalorians and Jedi. Like we need, like you know, like. No, I'm not. I, I get. He should do that. I'm worried if it will look good in live action. Here's, That's here's my, my worry. Thing, like, like I'll bring this up because this comes up with uh, Book of Boba Fett, right? Okay. Yeah. Like we, as an audience, as a Star Wars fan, were rewarded by having Cad Bane in that series because we know what that motherfucker can do. He is the best bounty hunter in the galaxy. Boba Fett was up there too, right? So in that show. A lot of people were like, ah, he's fucking, they just brought in this random character and, and thought it was good. I personally think it's brilliant because you had Boba Fett, who was the best bounty hunter in the galaxy, get to go up against himself, the best bounty hunter in the galaxy. Sure. But for people that are just watching that maybe aren't huge Clone Wars fans that don't really know who he is, sure. they don't understand it didn't that mean- Cad Bane is the best, you know, they yeah. don't know that he has rocket boots. It didn't mean a lot. They didn't mean as much to them. It meant a lot to us. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. But 
it doesn't mean a lot to the general audience because they don't get to see it, right? If you bring an Embo and you want people to feel like, oh my God, you fucking know what he can do, you got to show it. You got to show that motherfucker sliding on his on his hat, blocking him with his hat, and then doing this at the end of the scene. <laughs> doing this. You got to do it. With his dog. With his, yeah, his you, dog. You yeah. got to have his dog there. Yeah, but his like giant crossbow thing, which I guess like Sherrit Wimley kind of had something like that too. But Yeah, he kind of had something. Yeah, but I, I think that there's a place in live action for Embo, voiced yeah. by Dave Filoni. Voiced by Dave Filoni? He, I mean, he's already yeah. Trapper, uh, yeah. Wolf or whatever, right? Yeah. But no, I thought like Ventress... They they mentioned them and I I liked I I never know the order of how we should go through this book yeah. like whenever we talk Everybody about stuff read. you know so yeah hopefully <laughs> you guys read all this stuff too but we we're not going necessarily in order but yeah. when you have Quinlan get captured and stuff mm-hmm. and he's he's like watching her run away and he feels like she's just leaving me here yep. but she's like I'm gonna take this what am I gonna do I'll go talk to Obi Wan no he won't believe me mm-hmm. well who else can I go to what can I do and then she's like I'm gonna go to the people I betrayed do I have any friends right. <laughs> I'm going to go to these people that I betrayed. I locked in a chest the last time I met him, which we saw that in Clone Wars too, right? Yep. And I'm going to hire them. And even then, Boba Fett's like, you're going to betray us, and I don't trust you. Yes. But like Bosk, I think it was, yeah. and, and another bounty hunter were like, hey, 200,000 credits. We're going to do That's this. A lot of money. You know, I don't care what you say, Boba. We'll go. Yeah. You know? So I, I just I, I enjoyed that. One, it meant that she cared enough about him to mm-hmm. want to go do this. Um, and then even still, when she tried that and it – it failed because he was turned or, you know, whatever, or, yeah. or still trying to, like, he, he claimed that he was trying to, like, pretend to be bad so he could yeah. get a stabbing on Dooku or something, but, I but mean, then it didn't that, work or he whatever. Got, he was and, broken by what he, because, you know, they say, like, it's not he, just about seeing yeah. the, like, you know, he has a psychometry ability. Yeah. And he holds his master's lightsaber, right? Yeah. Uh, it's not, Thul? Thul, yeah. It's not about just the knowledge that Ventress killed his master. He could feel it yeah. happen, too. So I think that no matter where he is mentally, I don't think that's something that you can, like, all right, got through that, you know? Yeah. So I think that it's just – it was a moment of just pure instinct, if you will, to feel the way he felt there, regardless of what he wanted to feel. Yeah. Which I thought it was interesting that, like, Dooku just had, like, a little, like – he had General Grievous kind of collection. Like, he yeah. had a little cabinet. He's like, here's all my collection of Jedi lightsabers, yeah. you know? Yeah, right. <laughs> he opens it up. He's like, take like, These are one. the good ones. Yeah. Grievous gets the scraps. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought it was interesting that he had a little little grouping of things there. But uh, but no, no I, I, I like that even, even in, like, a desperate moment, like, she cared enough about Quinlan. Like, I'm going to go talk to Boba Fett, Boba Fett, who I betrayed and <laughs> never want to see again. But he also, like, in the mission, kind of like, I don't know. There was a moment where I felt like he didn't have to do what he did sure, to, to help right? her out, you know, because he's like, well, we're part of a group, and at least that's something important to me, and that that funnels all the way forward to his own series. It does? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I, I, I really enjoy that. I was glad that they brought them in mm-hmm. and kept that bounty hunter group in, yeah. in Clone Wars, and it would have just been another time to – I don't – think we saw Boba Fett again in Clone Wars after that train no, s- episode, no, I mean, right? He was meant to have the Cad Bane moment. Sure, and, yeah. You know, whether that's canon or not lives in a weird state of non-being. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> so, but no, I, I really enjoyed that, and I was glad that we got to see all them. But even after that failed then, too, what does she do? It's like, well, that didn't work. I guess I'll go to my first choice. Yeah. I'll go see Obi-Wan. Right? <laughs> Didn't like when you like when you heard that Ventress is like in the Jedi Temple, weren't you just like, holy shit. That's crazy. Can we, can, are we allowed to do that? Mace might just stab her. <laughs> he he <showed laughs> him, he's like, put her in jail. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and uh he's like, no, no, I promise. Good, you know, good faith. She came here. Yeah. She won't be harmed. Yeah. So I'm I'm glad that Obi-Wan was like mm-hmm. very pushing of like this and yoda's like "Mm, yeah Yeah. (laughs) i I also love yoda's utilization of like everybody's like do you think he's turned i don't know she says and they say and then yoda's like well let me find out (laughs) he has one conversation like he's turned (laughs) 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 i just thought that was so funny i mean yeah it makes sense like you know yoda says something like well this person can do this but i can i can look at someone's spirit yeah, in a way, like he just—he's like a human lie detector test. Yeah, which is funny because that motherfucker sits with Palpatine every day in that red office, doesn't feel anything. Sure, that's how good Palpatine. But Palpatine is. hides it so well, yeah. you know. That's just the, the thing that it side. does. So, um, I mean, it's another it's, for it, me. It's another building block on like why Palpatine's able to pull off what he does. Sure, where like you know some it, people might be like they sit with him and then he turns around and smiles evilly, but. 
Yoda is, and, and the Jedi are so confident that Yoda can read people that if sure. he gets nothing, then it must be nothing. Well, and it feeds well, too, of, like, archives. why... Archives. It's not in the archives. It doesn't exist. Yeah. Why does the council change their mind on, you know, Anakin Skywalker? It's like, well, the Qui-Gon's defiance, they sensed in him. Yeah, you know? Right. So, like, we don't want you to do that. All right, fine, do it. Yeah. I, I know what you're going to do if we tell you no I anyway, know. so... I've always ahead. found that was funny, where the, the council, like, the, all of these wise Jedi are like, no, this is a mistake. And then Qui-Gon's like, I'm going to do it anyway. And then Obi Wan's like, I'm gonna do it anyway, and the council's like, All right, fine, do it. <laughs> like, well, motherfucker, what does it matter if you decide or not? Then if I was to do it anyway. <laughs> so, but <sighs> that's what they're like. Yeah, I know. Um, what else was there? Um, oh, I I mentioned loosely uh, the sleeper uh, that was on Dathomir, on Dathomir yeah. and I was like, that was an interesting creature, I and like I like the exchange of what they did too, of like describing Quinlan like. Bringing, waking this creature up that was sleeping that didn't want to wake up, you know, and like yeah. the little battle that they had there. Mm-hmm. And at one point, like Ventress says something, and I felt like I feel like she wanted to help, but she wasn't helping. So I felt like Quinn was like, "Huh? Oh! I know, right? <laughs> like, what are you doing? Yeah, don't talk to him right now. He's no. focusing." <laughs> that was a cool like uh, trial of the spirit Jedi thing, but yeah. you got this dark side version of it. Yeah. yeah, you have to push this dark side element to be able to fight this sleeper creature, and yeah. it, you need the dark side or else you won't defeat Dooku. Because if you can't even destroy this creature, why are you gonna kill Dooku, who used to be one of you? You mm-hmm. know. And I was like, "This is an interesting yeah. idea, and I like this." And they also talk about like. They they talk about her her sisters and stuff. They talked yeah. about the last time she tried to assassinate Dooku. They talk mm-hmm. about Savage. You know, they they go through all Wars this is stuff. All you know, and, thing, yeah. yeah. I I, I it, there was just something about this book where I think I think Clone Wars might be one of my favorite things of Star Wars just in general. Sure. Uh, and it might be just because it's so vast and there's just so many different stories. It's all and the stuff, setting you know? too. Like it's really it's really easy to remember. Like you have these guys versus these guys, but ultimately it's this guy doing both of it. You know. Sure. Very yeah. simple. No, I understand that, and uh, the just the this, this, the story elements that we go through just to have it where it's still Clone Wars, but also have it where it's like this is a this is it's it's got to be a novelization because we don't get the car, the cartoon element of yeah. it. I I like feeling inside Quinlan's head during the Force sensitive mm-hmm. moments and what he's thinking about for. You know, it was what we talked about before, where it's like, well, should this have been a cartoon? Yeah. I would have liked it to have been, but also, like, I don't quite get inside Quinlan's head Agreed. in the Zero the Hut hunt, yeah. hunt. You know what I mean? But an interesting side effect of this being, it used to be eight episodes and now it's a book, is that it has such a unique pace to a book. Like, I've read a decent amount of books, but this one's like, all right, and we move on, and we move on, and we move on, and we move on, and we move on. Because they're going through eight episodes of stuff, and those eight episodes each have little, like, two or three act arcs in them, mm-hmm. right? So I just thought it was uh, it's kind of a interesting slash leaning on the good side of, like, this book is paced remarkably well, in yeah. my opinion. No, I think so, too. Yeah. I, I liked it a lot. I was curious at one point, because we went to, like, a... Uh, uh, shoot, what planet was it with Dooku, and he has, like, a party going on? I forget. It was so with a V, I think. Wasn't it Raxus? Was it Raxus? Well, yeah, I, like they were going to where the you know the separatist capital was. Sure, yeah, and that's where he was gonna feel the most secure. For some reason I had in my head like there was like a Vancor or something like that or mm. whatever, but maybe I may have missed yeah, But anyway, like we go there and I'm like, are we gonna are we gonna assassinate Dooku? Here? Are we gonna have the I'm, I'm, I'm only halfway through the book. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, right? what, what are we doing? What, what's next? Yeah. And what are we gonna have happen and stuff? So yeah, I, I thought it was. Uh, I thought like we had that happen, and then it moved on to like a little bit of a different thing, and that's when we sure. had like now we got to rescue Quinlan. Oh, now we've rescued Quinlan, but is he still Quinlan that we knew, or yeah. is he this enigma now? You know, mm-hmm. and it, no, I like the pacing of it, and at the same time, I think the pacing works because if it's gonna be eight episodes and was gonna be three episode arcs, four episode yeah. arcs, whatever it was gonna be, I, I think that that yeah. makes sense to me more now. Where I'm like, ah, this is where a break could happen. Here's sure. where it could pick back up again, you yeah. know? That's why there can be months in between these Agreed. things and stuff. And I thought it was really cool. And, you know, I mean, we can say this of any prequel era book or whatever, too, or really any Star Wars book, if you really want to go with it, when we're filling in gaps between movies or TV shows, in that this whole thing is predicated on the assassination of Count Dooku. But I know he doesn't get assassinated. Yeah, I know that's not going to happen. <laughs> you know? So you do kind of go into it with this little bit of a stigma of, like, all right, let's get to it, because it ain't going to work out. Sure. You know? And I, so then I'm, like, kind of left with, like, okay, I know it's not going to work out. How is it not going to work out? And I felt like the book did a 
in the beginning and the middle did a decent job, but when it got towards the end and, and stuff actually started happening in terms of like, no, like Asajj is not making it out mm-hmm. of this and and how Quinlan, who has earned his love for her, feels about it. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, that's good shit. Yeah. And that's I like something that, that kind of I don't feel like Clone Wars Clone Wars rarely got to that point. So yeah. I wanted to say good on whoever was responsible for that, whether it was Katie Lucas or Dave or or uh, Claudia Gray. Or yeah. no, uh, Christy no, Golden. Yeah, Christy. Yeah. Christy. No, I, I just, I agree. I think it was really, it was done really well. I really enjoyed a lot of the story elements. Yep. And I, I think the best part for me was like, I think I had assumptions Ventress wouldn't make it. But I had no idea if Quinlan would or not. Mm, and gotcha. the way it led, like, especially once I got halfway into the book. Yeah. Because like, like you said, I know Dooku's not going to die. Yeah. But someone probably will, right? Like, how do you how do you have a third assassination attempt on Dooku with Ventress? <laughs> yeah, and it's just like, well, if I just get away again, you yeah, know, no, like exactly something right. has to happen, yeah. right? So that was my assumption. Yeah. But like when Quinlan falls and stuff like that, I'm like, well, where are we gonna go with this part? Mm-hmm. And what what is he gonna feel? him? does he leave the order? Is yeah. that how we still like how how does he end up in the path? You know, yeah. is it is that is this what saves him? Sure. Is it like I thought it would be interesting? Like his love for Ventress. Maybe causes him to leave the order, mm-hmm. and that's why he ends up like a wandering Jedi later on, or whatever, following the path, or maybe, maybe helping other people along the path, or yeah. I, I don't know. So, we yeah, another character that the Jedi code has failed. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So, but no. Um, overall, I had a lot of fun with this book. It might be. I think out of what we've read so far, it's. I think it's just under Brotherhood for me, and that's okay. just because it's. It's Obi Wan and Anakin, oh, yeah, you know, and sure. like that one, like I, I have a bigger connection with those yeah. two characters. Whereas like Ventress, I had a connection with, and Quinlan, I didn't. But Quinlan sure. has risen to one of my favorite, like just kind of like he's back there, you know. Gotcha. Look, episode one, he's over there, you know. <laughs> yeah. No, I agree. I, I quite. In- you know, one thing I didn't realize yeah. was uh, Quinlan. Uh, Quinlan, is, dang it, he's not a human. He's something else. I think it's a kin, kin something. I was looking at something about him, and and I always thought he was a human, and something said that he was something else. Let me look what it was. What do you mean, like, you know, is he Corellian? Maybe that's what it was, and maybe that's why I was confused about it. Kafar. Kafar, that's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. It said that his species was Kafar, and I was like, I thought he was just, like, a human. But I don't know what a Kafar is or what's different about it, but maybe. Maybe it's a planet thing, but it's called a species on, on Wikipedia. Okay. So uh, I thought that was interesting too, but that's also it's under just... the canon section near human. Yeah. So I don't know yeah. what differences they have, but They're I was from the planets Kafu and Kafex. So I thought that that was an interesting thing that yeah. was something different in my head that I just assumed I guess that he was a, just a human. Yeah. They have scarlet blood and facial tattoos. Yeah. Interesting. So I thought that that was more of like. They put them yeah. on there, but it might be something that they're I mean, born with more stuff like, like uh, that's going to make sense where stuff. you have speciation. You know, the I mean, Ventress herself is like she's from Dathomir. They are connected with the Zabrik, who are from Iridonia, but mm. also there are certain you know, like uh, like she's she's not Zabrik. She's death. She's di- from Dathomir, right? Sure. But then, like in the old legends, she was called uh, like Rakata or something. Ratataki. Like Ratataki. Yeah, something yeah. like that. So, because so, I always thought she was Ratataki. Yeah. But then she's from Dathomir too. But yeah. maybe she's a Ratataki who's I, I don't know how they I mean, work. It goes back to symbiote circles, right? Like yeah. there's a symbiote circle of the the Dathomir women and the men. Yeah. Uh, and if you take one and put it with another species, it might not work out the same way. Just like the Gungan and the Naboo. I suppose. <laughs> sure. All right. Well, do you have anything else about Dark Disciple that we haven't covered? I don't. I uh, uh, I do kind of share your feeling of like, man, I just brotherhood. I'm able to just get into those characters' heads because I know them so well. Mm-hmm. But this is a new part, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would like to continue that. 